Hi there plant fans and thank you for coming along to my channel today The New Leaf. If you're new here my name's Helen and I run a plant shop in North Devon. If you've been here before thank you very much for stopping back. So I'm holding here a very tall Syngonium Ice Frost. I got a batch of these in the shop a while ago and I think this is the last one so I sort of taken my eye off it and today I realised how very tall it's got and thought what a brilliant opportunity it would be to put this gal on a moss pole and tell you all about the benefits of doing that, lots of tips and tricks and show you the whole process. So as you can see this has become a very large plant. I put a bamboo stake in it a couple of weeks ago because it was starting to flop about rather a lot and I was worried it would snap. So it's a lovely plant. I like this one. It's got really sort of blousy pillowy leaves a uh, perfect heart shape. Some of them can get quite large, as you can see. And then some of them have got this really nice sort of faded green variegation, which is really pretty. So this one I thought would be especially good. I don't know if you can see there, I'll pop a close up in as well. Um, but it's actually, it's either two plants or it's actually a double header. I'm honestly not entirely sure, but there is loads and loads of aerial roots popping out all over the stem. So I thought it would be a really good one because it should attach to a moss pole pretty fast. And then hopefully we might start to see it really take off. Just to give you an idea about the sort of moss pole we're going to be making today, you will see if you do some research, there's all different ways of making these. This is quite a common style, but you'll see a lot. It's quite a popular one. There are also D-shaped moss poles that you'll see people make and they have a plastic section which a lot of people like because they do help to stay really moist so you're having to wet them less often. So you can also buy various moss poles commercially pre-made for you. So these usually come empty and you can fill them with your own fresh sphagnum moss. So maybe you didn't want to make one yourself but you did want to put your plant on a pole. There are lots of ready-made options available online to do that if you look into it and do a bit of research. So this is my much beloved Epipremnum pinnatum variegata. So that to many of you will be a type of pothos which is exactly what it is. So this is the slightly pointier version, the pinnatum. Lots of you at home may have a pothos uh, epipremnum aureum, which is the more heart-shaped sort of wide leaf variety that you see in a golden pothos or maybe a neon. So they're very lovely as well. So all moss poleable. So this is the sort of thing that we are going to be doing today. It's very, very simple and a lot of fun. And I will be explaining to you a lot of the reasons and benefits uh, and why we actually bother doing this at all, really. On the subject of moss pole videos, if you look on YouTube, you will find some absolutely brilliant content creators who have been doing this a long time and have made some really, really in-depth guides to making moss poles and maintaining them. The very lovely Sydney plant guy, who is just the loveliest guy. He's so enthusiastic and really keen to share all his tips with the world. But let's focus on climbing aeroids uh, in particular, because that's really where all my experience sits. If you want a climbing air, oh, sorry, I've cut hair everywhere. So I thoroughly recommend looking him up. He's got a beautiful cat called Brad, who often appears in a lot of his videos and causes interruptions. Um, but I thoroughly recommend looking him up because his plants are all on these sort of seven foot poles. They have the most humongous leaves. He's done an amazing job. He's so committed. So if you want to see the results of exactly why we put these guys on poles, then definitely definitely look him up if you haven't seen his channel already why do we want to put our plants on moss poles and what are the benefits of doing this so many of you will already know that a lot of these plants in fact probably all of these plants are epiphytes what that means is when they're growing in the wild in a nice jungle or rainforest they are really looking for a much bigger plant ideally a tree to scramble up so they're looking to find the light 
So they will climb the plant, anchoring on with their aerial roots, getting taller and taller because they're attracted to the light above the canopy. So once they start getting higher up, the leaves will start getting bigger and bigger. And then we eventually start getting the magic word fenestrations or splits or holes in the leaf. And the reason for this is because the leaves have got so big by the time they've reached high up that tree that they are almost acting like a sail. Obviously, you're getting much windier up there. So they actually have evolved to, in their mature state, produce these fantastic splits and holes to stop the leaves acting like a sail and getting ripped to shreds. So they really are incredibly clever. It will get nutrients from the air and from rain and possibly from the tree itself. And the tree provides tremendous support. So it enables these lovely leaves to size up. If you Google things like Monstera and Philodendron and Epipremnum in the wild and have a look at some photos because they really are absolutely incredible. And I know very well if you go to some of the botanical glass houses in the UK and in other parts of the world, they do have some absolutely fantastic examples of these plants growing very, very nearly in their native conditions. So basically all we're trying to do with this moss pole is get it to pretend to be a tree so the plant thinks it's climbing up. As it climbs, it will anchor its roots into the moss. I'll pop some close-ups of this in because this plant has done this very well. So it has, since I put it on the pole, been producing bigger leaves much more consistently. So I'm really, really pleased with how this one's done. Another great perk behind using a moss pole for your plants, well, there's a few really, is that the pole is acting as an extension of the substrate in the pot. So all of your roots are growing happily into here. So it's just allowing them even more room to explore and do what they do in the wild. The other thing that makes this really, really useful, if you wanted to take a top cutting from the top of the plant, chances are you could cut through these main stems and then when you remove that cutting from the pole, you'd actually find loads and loads of really healthy and strong roots. So technically that cutting is already propagated. So you could probably just chuck it straight into substrate and even put it onto its own pole if you wanted. So that is a really good advantage of doing this. It does make chopping your favourite plants a lot less intimidating when you know that the little darling has already rooted Aww. into its moss pole. Just to explain to you a little bit about the equipment you need to actually make the moss pole itself. So very, very simple. So we've got this PVC coated wire mesh you can see there that's from a DIY store that is the 50 centimeter long roll I think it does come a bit longer than that but 50 centimeter so far has sufficed for any projects I've wanted to do so the most important component is our lovely fresh sphagnum moss you can buy this quite economically online now you can either buy it fresh which is a little bit more expensive because it is very much alive or you can actually buy it in dried blocks which you rehydrate and those are equally as good and can be really really good value as well so there's our lovely sphagnum moss if you're in the uk especially in england uh, you're probably what you've got has been harvested from wales all very sustainably there are a lot of retailers including myself now selling this type of moss so that's that. So obviously that is where our lovely aerial roots are going to nestle into and grow away. And then last but not least, we have got some teeny tiny cable ties. So these are the smallest ones I could buy. They are actually two and a half millimetres thick. Don't worry too much about the length because actually you're going to be snipping most of that off anyway. So we have wire mesh, we have our moss, and we have our cable ties. So as you see, our plant is about 50 centimetres tall and so is our mesh. So I think when I make this pole, given that it will be below the surface of the soil in the pot as well, 
I don't think it's going to last terribly long and I think it will need extending pretty soon but for the purposes of this video we'll give it a go. I probably wouldn't usually use a plant as well established as this but I couldn't resist because I think it's going to look so lovely and also because of all the very very lively aerial roots on the back there. So a good place to start with your moss pole is to decide how thick you'd like it to be. So factors that might affect this would be if, say, you had a tiny baby plant that you were putting on its first ever moss pole, you might want something a bit thinner. So this syngonium has got two very good sized main stems. So I think I'm going to make a fairly thick pole for this one. So looking at the one I did for this epipremnum, you can see he's quite a chunky one. So that's 12 squares around. So I think I might go for either 10 or 12 round. So 10 would obviously be a little bit thinner than that. I'm not sure it needs to be quite as big as this one. So I think that's decision made. I'm going to go for one that's around 10 centimetres in circumference or all the way around. <laughs> so now we know how big we want our moss bowl to be. We need to cut our piece to shape. So I would usually use wire snips for this, but these new ones I got are rubbish and I've realised they don't have the little sprung bit in the middle, so I'll just take you forever. So please pretend I'm actually using wire snips, but what I'm going to be using is my kitchen scissors. So hey ho. So we decided on a 10 centimetre circumference pole. So quite simply counting the squares along the top of your mesh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we want ten entire squares, so we cut after the tenth, like that, and then just carefully working your way down that row. A little bit tricky with scissors. Down flat. Now we know where we are. So we are getting there. Nearly done now. Right, there we go. So that is our piece cut to size. Hope you can see that okay against my dark top. So just a safety warning about this, obviously you are cutting metal wire and leaving a pretty rough raw edge. So obviously if little kids are going to be around these, this edge can be a bit snaggy and sharp. So just an extra word of caution about that. You can also see some of these left over little knobbly bits. Feel free to trim those off depending how anal you are about such things. They can be a bit pokey, so I'm just going to trim those off now. What I like to do here, just to make life a bit easier, is to actually shape this round something that is round, round and round. So something like a broom handle, a rolling pin. I have used a roll of cling film at a push. Just anything sort of vaguely solid that you can shape this round just to make your life a bit easier when you are putting the moss in and cable tying it all together to get that nice satisfying round pole shape. So I've had to improvise because of course I forgot about this, forgot to bring anything to work with me today. So I've actually got this roll of tissue paper that I'm hoping will suffice. It's quite a good length as you can see. So all I'm gonna do is just to start to sh give this a bit of a tube shape, just squishing it round and just squeezing it as hard as I can, just to start to introduce that round shape. So I'll turn it over so I can do the other side. So just forming it round that tube. So it doesn't have to be perfect, it really is to just start getting that nice round shape together. So we can see that that has helped do that quite nicely. Just a quick word about how to prepare your moss before you put it inside your nice piece of mesh. 
So you can see this moss here, while it was fresh when I got it, it has gone a bit sort of brown and dry. So people do this two different ways. They either fill the tube with dry moss, put it all together and then damp it down. Or the other school of thought is to get the moss nice and damp first and then fill the tube. That's the way I prefer to do it because then the pole is pretty much ready to use straight away. I also feel it just gives a truer representation of how the pole will end up. And when the moss is wet, it's much, much easier to really, really pack it in because you want this absolutely jammed full. Beep beep. I've just given my moss a really good damp down. So I did that by putting it into a bowl really really soaking it and then squeezing out almost all of the excess water so you can see now that that's still quite fluffy it's not by any means dripping wet because we don't want that because aerial roots can suffer from root rot just as easy as any other type of root so it's nice and damp and that will get us off to a good start so hopefully it'll be a little while before we have to damp this pole down once we've started using it so that is all ready as regards to amount, I don't think I've made a single moss pole where I've actually prepared enough moss to start with. I've always had to go back for more. So I would say as regards to how much moss do I need, probably double the amount that you think you're going to. Obviously, if you need to top it up, then you can go back and do that at the end. Right, so let's start filling this bad boy up. So we've got our mesh. We've got our sphagnum moss, we've got a pair of scissors to hand and also some of our cable ties because we'll need those soon. So I'm just going to lay my mesh down flat. That was a very large cement mixer. So I've laid this down flat and what I generally do is grab a wadge of moss, squash it into a fairly tight ball and then just plop it down like that and that is sort of how I start things off. So we'll start doing exactly that and filling this up. So you want this really tightly packed so really give it a good old squish together. So I'm starting there, I will explain why in a moment although I'm sure some of you have probably guessed already especially if you've been watching Sydney Plant Guy and also Lovely Plants by Melissa, who also does some absolutely fabulous moss pole videos. The size she has got her Marble Queen to just is phenomenal. You definitely, definitely have to check out her videos too. Look at those leaves. They're humongous. So the newest leaf is this one. It's growing like off of the pole. But just look how huge this leaf is. So that is getting a bit more full. So keep stuffing. Little gap there. And don't worry too much if there are a few gaps because it is possible once you've added your cable ties and secured it all together, it is totally possible to fill in any little gaps that you might have spotted afterwards. So don't worry too much about that. Right, so that's looking quite nice and full. So the reason for the gap I've left here is if I grab the new pot, if I can find it. So this is the pot our Syngonium will be going into, a bit of a size upgrade there. So if you imagine when this is all together and we put it in the pot, the bottom of the pole is almost going to be at the bottom of the pot. So because this part is going to be under the substrate, we are not going to fill it with moss because that could start to affect the soil and cause root rot and all sorts of things like that. We're actually going to fill this part with our normal potting substrate. So I'll show you that when we've cable tied it all together. So just get rid of that. So you can see if I squeeze this together, that is looking quite pleasingly full. So what we're going to start to do, I'm just going to swap it around that way because I'm right handed. So this is so simple. We just find your first square at the very top and feeding your cable tie through both squares. I bet you can't guess where this is going. So poke the little end through, pull it nice and tight. And that has pulled our moss pole together at the top. 
So work your way down. I tend to put these about every five or six squares, maybe four or five if it's a smaller pole, but play around, see what you think is best for keeping the edge of the mesh together. So there's one, so one, two, three, four. So I think I'm gonna put one in every fifth hole or thereabouts. So I will just get on with doing this. Excuse me, because it's not the most interesting thing in the world to watch. So one, two, three, four, five. And these will be positioned at the back of the pole. So you won't see these unless you start getting into the position where you have potted up lots of cuttings in one pot to get a lovely full plant. And then you might have actually found that you have spun the moss pole round a bit at some point. If you hear muttering of a childlike nature, I have actually got my little boy in my back room. Bit of a childcare fail this afternoon, but he's been very good, so I'm not going to jinx it. What did people do before cable ties? I just love these things. Mind you, they probably weren't making moss poles back then, were they? So one, two, three, four, five. So we're coming to the part now which is going to be under the soil. So depending how ably retentive you are, I am very. Um, I like the gaps I can see to all be the same, but if it doesn't quite work out and the ones under the soil are a bit uneven, no one will ever know. It's okay. So you can be a bit more economical with your cable ties under the surface of the soil. I suppose that's what I'm trying to say. Right, we are nearly there. So I'm just gonna skip this gap a bit and pop one in the bottom just to stabilize things. There we go. So we definitely need another one in the middle there somewhere. Right. So you can see our moss pole is really getting there and starting to take shape. You can probably guess what we're gonna do next, although that is oddly satisfying. But actually, this is very satisfying too. Take your scissors and get rid of all your little tails. Bye bye tails. This is quite pleasing, I must admit. There we go. Right, that's much neater. So what you can do now is spend a bit of time, depending how tidy you like things, just rounding out the shape a bit. You can give it a little squeeze if you're finding it's a bit flat on one side. You can poke in any annoying bits of moss that you think are a bit messy. A bit of this action is quite good too. Helps it get a bit, that's a bit rude. Helps it look a bit tidier. So there we go. And as I mentioned before, if you notice any gaps, arming yourself with good old pokey stick, all you actually need to do, it's a bit fiddly, but it works, is say you see a bit that's a bit not very full, get a little ball and just stuff it in one of the holes. And then you just get your pokey stick and just jam it in till you are satisfied. But that is looking quite full. I'm actually quite pleased with that. I've got some in my hair. It always gets everywhere. Little fibres. So yes, we are getting there. So next part we're going to do is repot our plant with its new pole, in its new pot, with its new soil. All the new things. Okay, so time to have a look inside our Syngonium's pot and see what's going on in there and get him into his new pot with all the other bits and pieces. So I'll just untie my bit of twine here. Aerial roots are, there we go. Take the bamboo out. So now you can see very clearly what I mean about either this is two plants or it's actually a double header. They're very close together at the crown, so it's almost impossible to see. So let us find out. Give him a little squeeze. Oop, there we go. Get rid of that one. Right, so a little pokey sign as well. 
So this is still the substrate that comes straight from the commercial nurseries in Holland. It does vary as to the quality. Uh, there's not a lot of drainage in here. As usual, we've got some huge lumps of cocoa husk. Lovely healthy roots though. So let me see, is this two plants or is this a double? Oh, here we go, look. Ooh. I think I have my answer. I'm trying to be gentle, but I've found Syngolium are quite tough when it comes to his roots. So there we go. So that has now come apart into two plants. So they should sit very happily, hopefully either side of our new moss pole. So yay, good result. Okay, so we're on to repotting our lovely Syngonium ice frost into its new pot. So I have got, funny enough, plants, I have got new pot, I have got moss pole, and very importantly, I have got here my standard chunky aroid mix for potting into. So when I mix my own soil, I am fully peat free, very, very important nowadays, and something we should be paying very close attention to. So the main base of this mixture is cocoa compost. You may have also heard that referred to as coir compost. There's a lot of worm castings in here to provide nutrition because coir compost itself has none. It is nutritionally devoid. So as a lot of us know, aroids like really chunky chunks to wrap their roots around. It's another part of trying to replicate those conditions that they grow in the wild. So in here, I have also got fine bark, I've got coarse bark, I've got some cocoa husk, because it's a little bit more water retentive than bark. I've also got a good amount of perlite for extra drainage and to ensure lots of air around the roots and some other bits of drainage material, which are in my secret recipe. So as you can see, that's a really, really loose, chunky mix because that is what these guys very much like to grow in. So we'll start by thinking about how we're going to position our pole and our plants. So I'm going to try and do this back to front so you can see what I'm doing. So if I fluff it a bit, bear with me, it's a little bit weird. So if we imagine our pole somewhere close to the back like that in the middle, is that going to work for these plants? No, I think it's going to have to be a bit more central because they are both very large. So if we imagine that somewhere like that, sort of centre back slightly maybe. And then if we imagine our lovely plants going in either side. Yeah, I mean, this is going to need a pole extension in like five minutes, but we're just going to blow past it. So that will be secured against there. And then the other one will go in next door so that will end up looking is that the right way round it's sometimes really hard to see which way is the best because of which way it lies actually I think it's that way there we go so if you imagine that is going to look a little something like that when we've got it all in place so we're going to take all that out again now we've had a little measure so as I mentioned before, we're going to fill this empty section of our new pole with our chunky aroid mixture. So I'll get rid of my pot. So this is a bit bizarre because obviously it does just want to kind of fall out of the holes. But just do your best, stuff it in. If you've got a pencil or something pokey that you can help, it does make life a little bit easier. Eventually it will fill, I promise you. Where's my pokey stick? So try and jam as much of that in there as we can. It doesn't have to be a hundred million percent full. Just you just want it to carry on and just be more space inside the pot for those lovely new roots to grow in. So we're sort of getting there. Keep stuffing, keeps falling out the holes, keep stuffing, don't give up. There we go, that's looking pretty full. There we go, I think that will probably do. So I'm 
just going to tip that back in my soil bucket. There we go. So that is more or less full of substrate in there now. So we're not using any further support because this is not that tall. If you do watch Sydney Plant Guy's videos, he starts at a metre, I think, at his shortest pole. So you might want to use some extra support like a, a rose cane or a bamboo cane, something like that to stop your pole wobbling around inside the pot. But I think with this size, once we've got all the soil in and we've got everything watered and secured together, I think it will be absolutely fine. So we are just gonna start adding a bit of soil around the base of our pole. This is very much the exciting part for me. I do get in a bit of a tangle sometimes and wish I had a third arm, but it is not to be, so I just have to do my best. Right, so I've filled that up now probably about a third of the way. So obviously we want that pole to start to be anchored down, but we still need lots of room for those lovely roots of our plant. So I'm gonna take my first one. Yeah, that's definitely the side that's lying against the pole. You can see how flat that is. And all the growth is at the other side. So we are gonna tuck that down. So make sure you put the plant at the same soil level that it was before, just like when you're repotting any other plant, exactly the same. So that is probably about there. Still trying to keep everything central as well, can be a bit tricky, but doable. So we'll pop him in that side. Oh, I just poked myself in the eye. So he is going on that side, get all those my goodness, that is a rooty syngonium. Certainly very happy. So tuck all that in. That can go a little lower, I think. There we go. And just make sure you're happy with the position that they are sort of even and central. If you want them to be, obviously, if not, then put them where you want them to be. Right, so I think that is about the right level to fill up now the rest of our pot. Excuse me while I make a terrible mess and chuck soil everywhere. Because I can't really see what I'm doing, so lots of it is by feel. There we go, lovely chunky mixture. So that is doing quite well. I'm hoping I can let go in a minute and give you a proper look. That is starting to feel a lot more stable. So give it a little whack because it's a very airy mix. So we want to make sure there's no air pockets in the soil. There we go. That is doing quite well. Oh, I think I might let go. Oh, I've let go. Exciting. So a little bit more at the front or back. I haven't quite decided yet. Or it hasn't let me know, put it that way. Right, I think we are nearly there. A little bit more around this side. As I've mentioned in other videos, I always overfill my pots, so I'm trying to not do that because of course you water it and then it all just floods out the top of the pot. <laughs> so that's the end of that stage. You can see we have got our two plants snuggled in next to our moss pole in their nice new soil. So the next thing to do is actually secure them onto the pole so that those aerial roots get a little bit of help just to direct into the moss and burrow in. And then it will really, really start to secure itself to the pole. And I've actually found then after a month or two, I can take all the tape off and it's all secure and safe and very firmly attached to its moss pole. So as you can see, this plant has already taken on a bit of a lean, so we definitely need to get this one secured onto the pole particularly. So additional things I have grabbed are, I've got my scissors back, and this is the most wonderful stuff ever. This is Velcro florist's tape. Now you can buy this quite expensively for say four or five pounds for the branded stuff. What I have found is you can get a three pack of slightly thinner stuff, but it's absolutely as good 
on eBay and Amazon and you will save yourself a small fortune if you get that stuff instead. So little tip from me. So it's absolutely fab, it's really gentle and it's Velcro so it sticks to itself. No sticky, horrible tape. I can't bear that sticky florist tape, it's vile stuff. And this is completely reusable as well. So a little bit more sustainable and pocket friendly. So what we're gonna do, my goodness, is I think maybe start at the top, just so we stop him flopping about everywhere. So if we, you're probably not gonna see my face for a lot of this, but who cares, it's not about my face. So we're going to pop him back up against his pole and make sure it's fairly straight. That's something I often forget. And then I look at it later on and end up redoing it because the plants are all wonky. So try not to do that. So we're gonna try and get them in roughly the right position, which is about there. And then what you need to do, funnily enough, is cut a length of your tape. So just have a rough measure, because again, this is one of those ones where I always need more than I think. So you want to allow for some overlap of the tape, and you also want to allow for those main stems thickening up a bit as the plant matures. So there we go. Where's the back? Oh, that's the back of the machine, isn't it? There. So we're gonna, we've cut our length of tape, and then we're gonna wind it gently around our main stems just to secure those. As I said before, this is where a third arm would come in quite handy. So we'll bring that round to the back. Make sure you're not trapping any of the actual leaf stems, the petioles. Uh, with your tape, you know, make sure it is definitely the main stem that you are securing. So there we go, that's our first bit of tape on, so already that is looking much happier. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> so we'll go for our next one. Should have measured that bit of tape, shouldn't that would have been easier, but hey ho. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. So we'll cut another bit, again with a bit of extra. So I'm going to come down away, I think, to secure this. So another thing to look out for is just making sure if there are any new growth points anywhere that you're not blocking those off. So if you can see what I mean about the leaf stem, I hope you can see here. So I'm just about to go round this leaf. So instead of going around it like this, so what I'm actually going to do is go under that leaf stem there because that does not need to be attached to the pole. So hopefully that makes sense. And round we come and securing him like that. There we go, so we're getting more stable as we go. We'll have one more bit of tape at the bottom and then possibly another one at the top. See, how, see what we think. Again, just measuring to get a rough idea of how long to cut this, because it's a bit thicker at the bottom. So again, coming round here and avoiding those leaf petioles. Oh, there's actually a new, what's that? Oh, that's a mad aerial root. So we're gonna come under here so we are just trying to get those aerial roots squashed up right against that lovely damp moss so they'll start to worm their way in and really secure that plant to that lovely pole. So one more for the top. I'm glad I ordered some more tape today because that has only left me with that much. So I've cut my bit of tape again. Exactly the same thing finding a good place to secure those main stems to our lovely new pole. Right, so there we go, that's four pieces on. So I'm just gonna grab my watering can because I have, of course, forgotten to get that. Right, so we'll give these guys a good water. Get that 
really settled in there. That feels almost there. Oh, I've just seen another growth point there. Lovely. We gave our moss a good dampen down, so hopefully this pole won't need re-wetting again for a while. Uh, some different ways of keeping moss poles wet to save you a bit of time and effort. You'll find, as I said, lots of lovely tips from other creators on YouTube, such as Sydney Plant Guy and Plants by Melissa. They have lots of good ideas about how to keep your poles wet. Sydney Plant Guy, I know, uses uh, recycled plastic bottles. He makes a little hole in the lid and quite simply places them on top of his moss poles and lets gravity and time take care of it, which I think is a great option. I have recently discovered these lovely little plastic watering spikes, cheap as chips, from a well-known online retailer that rhymes with emu. These actually cost me something like 27 pence each, which is a bargain. So an idea I've had recently, I'm sure I'm not the first, is to actually fill one of these and then literally just pop it in the top of the moss pole like that and again let gravity and time do the work so that's a good option if you've got these plants at home like i do i've got a number of plants on moss poles at home i went a bit mad a year ago thank you sydney plant guy and now they're coming to the point where they all need extending at the same time yay but it's working the leaves are sizing up they look really happy and they look really natural. I do love the look of this. I think it's a really fun thing to do. So lots of people will put them all in the bath and give all the poles a really, really good shower. If you're feeling extra nice, you could use sort of slightly warm or room temperature water when you shower your plants. Showering your plants is a really good idea anyway because it not only waters the plant and the moss pole at the same time, it also cleans the leaves of any dust, it helps them to breathe. Also, it's a really good pest prevention idea because showering your plants regularly, say every two weeks during the growing season, it will actually stop any determined colonies of pests building up and can actually stop you having a big problem. Uh, maybe just a tiny problem instead. So yeah, that's a really good thing to do. Also, if you've got one of these pressure sprayers, that's a really easy way to keep the pole damp. You can just give it a little spray like that. You can even go straight in the top like that as well. Pressure spray is a really good, easy option as well if you don't have an alternative or if perhaps you're not willing to stick your plants in the shower. So that is done, I would say. So that is the front there, and that is the back where you can see our cable ties just hiding in there. So I think you'll agree that that looks really, really happy. It's a really nice way of supporting a plant. I much prefer the look of this than bamboo canes. And you're doing so much good for your plant by doing it this way as well. As I said, there really are multiple benefits to putting your plant on a pole. So that is done. I'm not going into plant care during this video because there are probably a thousand videos on Syngonium care. Almost certainly I will be adding to those at some point soon. But I hope you like the look of that. I think that looks really smart. So I hope you enjoyed that brief guide to moss poles, making them and the reasons for using them. As I say, if you're looking for something more in depth, there are some brilliant videos on YouTube. So I thoroughly recommend a deep dive into those. But hopefully you found this useful and it's given you a good sort of starting place, given you a few more things to think about. Maybe you'd like to find out a bit more. So thank you very much for watching my video today. Please do hit those like and subscribe buttons if you'd like to see more from me or you found this video useful. I'd love to hear your tips and any extra advice that you found really successful in the comments. I know many of you have got heavily involved in the moss pole process over the years. So some of you must have some absolutely amazing, incredible, huge leaves by now. 
I will, as I say, have to do an extend process on a couple of my plants at home. So you can expect further videos on how to extend your moss pole. So that'll be fun. So thanks again for watching and I will see you again very soon.